What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plant. Today we're going to be doing some plant chores. People apparently like to watch other people do plant chores so that's what we're going to do today. It is currently like 1.30 a.m. This is about the only time I can get time to do stuff like this so we're going to pretty much go through this entire Ethereum shelf. Um, you can probably already see that there's a lot of just dead stuff. I know in some of the previous videos or at least the tour somebody mentioned the weeds that I have and there are some like legitimate weeds growing in here. Oh wow, did you see that? This might be kind of interesting to see. These weeds are really crazy. The way they spread these clover, these little things explode. Let's see if that one's ready. Eh, it's not ready. How about this one? Well, anyways, they have like they are under like attention, and then they can like fling seeds. It just happened, but you didn't really see it earlier. But that's how these things can spread even in here without the wind and stuff. These little seed pods, they can literally explode and like send seeds flying. So I don't know. I don't like weeds in my collection just because. Uh, what they do is they just help spread like spider mites and other stuff because some of the plants might not really be targeted by spider mites but the weeds are like almost always so it's good to keep them out of your collection so anyways so this one's like rooted in like crazy this is a magnificum seedling I don't know if you can really see that but these are all the this is the weeds root system it's crazy into the trash. And this is our little Magnificum root. This one's not doing so hot. Actually, quite a few of the Magnificums are not doing super good. Um, I don't know if it's my humidity or if I just am not watering them properly enough. Or maybe the soil conditions. I mean, the roots are actually pretty darn good looking. I'm not sure how well you can see that. But, but yeah, I mean, we're just going to try and pop most of this stuff up. Because... You can see a lot of empty pots here too, which are just seedlings that just never survive. So this has been something I've been meaning to do for like months and everything. So basically what I got going on here is I just got a bucket of dirt down here. You can't really see it. I can maybe tilt this down. It's like fixed, but anyways, there's a bucket of dirt there. And then I've got some pots and stuff too. And so yeah, just dumping the dirt into the bucket and then I'll reuse it, setting the pots to the side because I'm basically gonna reuse a lot of these pots because they're definitely not outgrowing these pots quite yet I mean some kind of are but some of them just need to be planted a little deeper uh, I guess I can show you an instance of that let's see what we got here here's one so it might be tough to see on camera but basically with anthuriums they kind of keep growing upwards and soon they'll start to put um, roots out in the air it's not that humid here which is kind of an issue because in my opinion if it's not humid enough the roots kind of just like dry up and stop pursuing like their search for something so a lot of my anthurium just get elongated I mean maybe I can find an example so sorry for the squeaky chair <laughs> there's nothing I can do about it well I mean there probably is something I can do about it but not right now um this is probably one of my favorite anthuriums actually this is anthurium um, umbricola or compact compact is what they had it labeled as but I'm pretty sure it's umbricola let me see yeah I mean here's the tag compact but that's a weird name in my opinion I, I, I just don't think it's accurate but here you can see that the anthurium is really growing upwards and this is like a root one to start here and there and they just don't they just don't keep going down to the soil because it's too dry in here so I like to like bury them a little deeper so those new roots can take take hold and do their thing this one is actually doing so so good I'm um, this is one of my favorites is what I, I say that pretty much about every plant but they're all my favorites is it a spider mite can't tell this one's flowering like crazy but they don't really ever produce anything I mean it looks like it wants to produce berries but then it just kind of aborts the flower so I don't know but yeah that's what I'm basically gonna be doing with all these little ones is repotting them so that way they can start to root a little better because some are getting a little elongated and usually with these like I like these thin plastic pots because I can just squeeze them like this and then that'll uh, break up the soil and they come right out really easy then I peel the little dead leaves off too I like to do that and now we have like a bare anthurium and let me get it in the light here a little bit you can see that the soil came up to about here but I want it to be a little higher so these new roots I really hope you can see this I can try and cut and zoom in but um, yeah I just want these newer roots to grab hold and it should be healthier overall so this one I can just repot right away, put a little dirt in the bottom. You can see how there's plenty of space in these little pots. 
And then I'll just add dirt on top. And that's pretty much it. These have been pretty neglected, I would say. Well, I don't want to say they've been neglected because I water them and fertilize them and take care of pests, but they haven't, they've been in this pot for over a year at this point, almost all of these, if not a little longer. And again, these are all seedlings that I've grown from seed and they're all anthurium. I guess we'll set the good ones over here. <laughs> this one's not doing hot. Uh, I can see the newest growth kind of fizzled out here on this one as well. Um, yeah, look at this pathetic guy. This was actually part of the, one of the live streams I potted a bunch up, but I ran out of time and neglected them, so I guess all we can do really is uh, just pot it up and hope for the best. I'm going to put it a little deeper, though, to keep that the new roots, when they come in, ready to like shoot into the ground. I've never really had a problem where like you can repot them too deep, honestly. They always seem to be just fine, no matter how deep I put them. Another little tip for my own self, honestly, a lot of you probably already do this properly, but I always keep filling these pots up to like the top and then I go to water them and the water just like runs off. A lot of my bigger plants, I have that issue. I was gonna make a short, just like telling people not to do it, but I'm pretty sure I'm the only person making that mistake continuously. So I'm gonna try and consciously remember to leave like a half inch up here so that way the water can sit on top and then soak through. We'll see if that holds true. Here's another Magnificum here. You can see not doing so hot. A lot of these older leaves dried up. Like I said, I'm having a heck of a time watering all these too because um, maybe I could put them in bigger pots so there's some space, but a lot of times these anthurium kind of obfuscate like the other pots, or maybe that's not the right word, but they block the other pots. I can't quite see how watered they are, so. Um, that's something I have to figure out how to deal with in this collection. Um, you can see this one actually has some like bad roots here. Got good roots up top, but the lower ones were actually pretty bad. So maybe that's why they rejected some leaves, but I don't know if you can see that there is a new growth here. So this one is going to pull through just fine. I, I'm not too concerned about it. I'll probably fertilize all these two just because I think it's been a little while. But I, oh, you probably, you also don't see this, but all those little leaves I'm ripping off, you know, and even the roots, they just end up back in the potting soil. <laughs> I just assume it's going to add some nutrients. I've never, I've never seen like the decaying matter cause like root rot or something, if that makes sense. Because most of the time it's so dry, it's like not enough anyways to really cause problems. So that's just what I do. I don't like to waste pretty much anything. I hope this squeaky chair is not a problem because it's the only one I got that I'm willing to like get dirty. All right, we have another Magnificum seedling. That's what most of this section is. There's some bird nest ones you can't see over there that I'm gonna probably repot that are getting pretty big. This one's root structure is a lot better, just overall not doing so hot in my setup. Like I said earlier, I don't think I can keep them humid enough and honestly, all the ones that are alive are the ones that have been hardy enough to survive. So there are, these are already like almost selectively bred for this environment because there were many more that just didn't make it. And there wasn't much. Oh, I shouldn't say there was many more that didn't make it. I gave away a lot and I traded a lot of them away because usually when I do a plant trade with anybody, I like to hook them up with these anthuriums because I got these seeds from a friend, so it's not like I, I didn't pay for the seeds, so I don't feel, well, I, I never feel stingy anyways about plants, so usually I'm like, oh, you want this one and this one and this one, so usually if I do like one plant trade, they end up getting a bunch of different ones, so, ooh, I think that chair is going to be annoying. I apologize in advance for the bad chair. But yeah, I like hooking people up with plants, it's a lot of fun too. Like, just keep adding plants. Like, here, you want this one? You want this one? And eventually, I won't have space for all these seedlings anyway, so it's good to trade them away to, to other people. So, it's fun. That's the one thing I do love about having all these extra seedlings is they're easy to trade away, and they're fun to just, like, bunch up in a box. They're easy to ship, too, which I think I owe, like, two or three people some plants still. But I just haven't had the time to really get them packed up, and it's been cold. So if you're watching this and I owe you plants, I'm sorry. I'll get them to you pretty soon here. Yeah, I don't know if you can really see that, but I'm planting them pre pretty much right up to, like, the new base. 
Like, look at this guy. This one is pretty toast, but eh, he's got a new leaf. We'll pot him up nicer. It's kind of, <laughs> you can see how bad this one is. <laughs> but if they're green, they're pretty much okay, in my opinion. They have a good chance of surviving, so we'll give it a shot. Oh, I just totally forgot I set this one in here and didn't pot it up. All right, let's get this guy going. I think what I'm going to use for fertilizer for all these is uh, Osmocote. So I haven't talked much about kind of how I, ra how I raise Anthurium seedlings or even my Anthuriums. I've never really made a care video about any of these. And really, um, that's because it's kind of hard, in my opinion, to give good advice about plant care because it's really... There's so many factors involved where like, I mean, I guess I can make some base videos to give you an idea of like how to care for some of this stuff, but I don't know. It really depends on your setup because it can be a lot different. Like, I guess for me, and I, it's been about a year now that I've been using this medium, so maybe I can recommend it at this point, but you'll see a little bit of sphagnum moss mix in here and a little bit of like uh, orchid bark, but that's not the primary mix. That's just from like recycled pots. Ooh, if that makes any sense. Like I said, I would just dump everything in this bin and reuse it. So there is like some standard like aeroid mix that gets put in here. But the bulk of my potting mediums ha have just been peat moss and perlite and that's it. And my ratio depends on kind of like what the plant is, where I'm going to keep it, you know, how often I want to water it. Because if you put a lot more perlite in there, you'll have to water it a lot more often. Which means it's harder to overwater, but it's easy to at least for these at least for these um, what do you call these like velvet anthuriums. I feel like if you screw up and they get a little too dry, they like really start to not look so hot, which is why a lot of mine don't look so hot. So maybe that's a problem. But again, I don't want to overwater stuff, especially when you have like some of you know this because you have a lot of plants as well. There's a lot of people out there with hundreds of plants. Like, your watering is not a very delicate, like, process. It's just, like, kind of spray and pray. You know, you just water everything, and some stuff might still be pretty wet. Like, for instance, this one is, like, you can't really tell on, on the camera, but it's really wet still. Some of these are bone dry, and some of these are wet. And they're all right next to each other. So that's where the difficulty comes when you got a lot of plants. But that's why I kind of like to do a lot of perlite at least because I'd rather have them dry out a little bit and look bad than get like root rot and just be like doomed. So that's kind of my like, my method, you know, water more often. Sometimes they get a little ugly because they get dry, but you don't root rot them as bad that way. This one is really weird. This one suffered quite a bit. But the cool thing about anthuriums is if they suffer, they put out a lot of side growth. So you probably can't see it, but there's a little growth here. There's a little one over here. And that's kind of the cool thing. Even if they're a little bit abused, they kind of, <laughs> I don't want to say they ever reward you for being abused, but because it's not a reward when they start putting out all the side growth, it kind of slows them down a little bit. But eventually then you get a bushier plant, which is kind of cool. So I know some of my plants look really nice because I almost killed them. And then they came back with all their side growth. And that's always like a nice treat. If you can bring them back from the brink of death, then you kind of get rewarded with like a, I guess, multiple growth. So here, this one's completely perished. There's nothing left in here. This one, nothing but brown leaves. We got a, we got a live one. <laughs> this one's all right. Again, this had a pretty nice big leaf on it, actually, that dried up. I also noticed, too, the ones on the edge dry out quicker. And I'm guessing because the way this chamber is, like, the humidity can sit kind of back here more. But once it hits this more open air, it really can dry out quicker. Which is weird because they, don't, they get less light, too, which surprises me that they dry out. But that's why a lot of the edge ones look so bad. Because you'll see later the bigger ones are in the back. And they will, you can see in, on the camera, I think, already that the nicer ones are more in the back. And they're quite, they're almost twice, three times the size of these front ones. And I think that's because it actually is like the relative humidity 
near the wall is quite a bit different than uh, even though it's only like 30 inches it makes quite a difference which is again why I want to build that big giant terrarium so I can jam some of this in there and really really have a sweet time with some sweet anthuriums more weeds like I said oh is there pests on here is that aphids yeah all right you can't see this but this weed is covered in aphids and this is why you got to pick these weeds because you get this crap <clears throat> I just want to like decimate these guys before they spread. And again, this is another, this is exactly what I mean when I said earlier, like sometimes these weeds will spread pests that don't even target this, these plants. Like I've almost never seen aphids take over anthurium like this because they just don't like them. Let that make, I'm going to stomp these. They deserve it. Grind them into the ground. Oh, they should be dead now. Anyways, um, like, the aphids don't actually eat these plants. However, the weeds, like, give them a place to live. And then they can spread elsewhere to plants that they do like to eat. So, don't leave weeds grow on your plants like I did. This guy's toast. I'm not even going to try and save him. He's compost. He'll be food for another plant. My plants are cannibals. Not by choice, but <laughs> because of how I take care of them. Again, I always peel off all this brown crap. I don't like it right up next to the plant. Like I said, I put it in the soil, which I don't mind because I don't think it causes a big deal. But when they're right up next to it like that, that's when it gets all wet and soggy and it kind of creates that like anaerobic condition, you know. So I ripped that stuff off. And this yellow one, it's going to be bad soon anyways because there's no leaves. So I just tear it off. Maybe I can zoom in on this and you can really see that there's all these like roots that want to start. So the soil was right here. And this was all sticking out. But I'm going to bury it to right here. And then all these roots can really root in and make a difference when it comes to like nutrient uptake and whatever else they do. So most of these just need to be potted a little deeper. And quite honestly, a lot of these could be potted in a bigger pot. But I actually had to buy some big pots. I thought these would be a good size. And I bought 500 of them. <laughs> and I... I mean, I probably used about 100, but I still have 400 in a box, so that was not a good purchase. I should have got a slightly better variety. And I also, when I ordered these, I bought a bunch of net pots, like really big net pots. And I was like, these are going to be for my anthurium, but uh, I think my anthurium will dry out so fast, so I, I haven't used them yet. But, oh, see, I almost over-potted this one. But I'm thinking about kind of sealing these shelves up a little bit so I can create a higher humidity environment and then I can use net pots and have like automated drippers that's that's end goal for this kind of stuff is like one I got to get the drainage figured out because I can't have drippers where the water will just continuously build up but once I get some drippers and stuff this stuff will be a piece of cake to take care of and I can when I go on vacation I don't have to beg people to help me and kind of deal with this crap so because it's I always feel guilty asking my parents I know they love me and everything and they'll do anything for me but it's not cool to make someone like look at this for like a whole week or take care of it and it's just a lot so more dead ones we'll just we gotta go a little quicker though this one oof yeah this one's dead let's investigate why see this is so interesting to me that this is like not doing so hot because these roots are like fine and dandy but the top just rotted out, you know? Isn't that weird? I mean, it's trying to push out growth, so there's a chance, but I don't know if I really want to deal with a, like a rescue at this point, so just forget it. But yeah, that, that was weird. I, I don't know why some of my Ethereum died yet. It's still one of those like learning things. You know, a lot of the YouTubers, we pretend like we know a lot, but I've been trying to grow anthurium for over maybe two years now, and I still, to this day, I'm trying to figure out like simple things about them and like why they die. One day, one day I'll figure it out. When I do, I'll tell you guys. Until then, I don't know. Yeah, these were all uh, Vidar folium seedlings. They did not do well once I transitioned them. Almost every single one died. This is the only one that survived. This beautiful one right here. Look at that. 
this one is starting to get longer leaves, but I think it's going to be a while before it's really got those big, like, beautiful strap leaves, but I'm looking forward to that because that's going to be absolutely fantastic. Wow, this one really is in there. Yeah, this one's a suit, like a, a champ. I'm, I'm actually quite excited for this one because this one was the only one that could survive in my conditions, which means, well, I'm assuming it means it's pretty hardy. So I want to get seeds from these because Vidar Folium are really famous for selfing. I think that's pretty much all they ever do is they just self-pollinate. So I'm guessing that whatever self babies come out of that one, they should also be pretty hardy or at least a majority of them. So, um... This is kind of a stretch goal, oops, a stretch goal here for me, but I would love to just, I wouldn't say this is because of laziness, more like I just can't get my humidity up. I can already like tell this wall is not rotting, but there's water at the bottom of the basement floor and the paint is peeling up and that's not good. <laughs> so I don't want to destroy my house with high humidity because right now it is 57% humidity in this room. Which is okay. I think 55 is fine. 60 is pretty safe as far as like mold showing up in the house. So I'm not super worried, but my point is what I'm trying to get at here is that um, slowly but surely, if I start breeding these plants, it's probably going to take five years, you know, 10 years, because I'm going to have to get all these babies to mature to flower and then get their babies. But over time, I should be able to get some plants that do not need super high humidity they'll be a lot more hardy at least that's my assumption because almost every other grower that's growing these they've got them in grow tents you know they got them in florida where it's really high humidity here's what i'm talking about with these big ones by the way much bigger than the previous doing pretty good actually this one's doing solid not many leaves but again i think that's about the, the whole humidity thing i was just talking about they just can't support that many but uh, anyways, yeah, I would love to like slowly create more, dr not drought hardy, but things that just don't require a ton of humidity because it's hard to have that in your house without specialized stuff. And, you know, a lot of people have those little like Ikea cabinets, which are fine. There's nothing wrong with those, but their space is so limited. Like every time I see an Ikea collection, it's like, this is like what everyone's plants look like. A little too leafer, you know, they never get that big or... You can't even let them get that big because there's just not enough space. So that's what I don't really care for with all these like super high humidity loving plants. It's like, eh, makes it hard to take care of them in a meaningful way without putting them in some specialized environment, which in my opinion takes away from like the whole, um, like enjoying them. Because if you have them locked away, like mine are locked away in the basement. I don't, I couldn't, there's no way I could keep these alive upstairs in my house. So I want to get it to a point where we can one day. That'd be sweet. So we'll see. Hopefully my neglect, coupled with my low humidity, we'll get some pretty sweet um, plants that don't mind like 50 or 40%. Because I think 50% humidity is actually like the recommended house humidity for like living. It's supposedly the most comfortable one. So I think 50% is a reasonable one to shoot for. And I'm about 8% higher than that. Sometimes it drops to 50 in here. I probably shouldn't have repotted this one. Honestly, it was doing good, but I want to get it a little deeper. You can see it's not, like, in there real good, which I... Hopefully after one watering, it's a little better. I don't know. Maybe it needs a bigger pot. But that's to be figured out later. Here's a cool forgetty eye here. Although... You know, maybe you guys know in the comments, sometimes, I, I don't know if it's because I let, I let it get too dry or it got too wet, but the leaves on my Ethereum will do this thing where, like, they get a little dry and goofy in one spot and then it just kind of tears itself apart. I still have not quite nailed that down. It looks like this one is going to flower very soon, which is awesome. I have another forgetty eye, the white stripe one that's flowering, which, I mean, I've talked about this on Instagram a little bit, but... Um, like my collection is finally getting to this point where it's producing flowers, like multiples, multitudes. I can really start breeding stuff because in the past, my only really flower producer was that big red crystalline, but now, um, I got a lot producing flowers. So that's like actually fantastic because that means I can finally start breeding at a, at a reasonable pace and not just one plant because it takes a while actually. I mean, I pollinated that one probably two months ago and the berries haven't formed yet. 
where they're starting to form. So it might be a total of like three months before we get berries that we can plant. And they, they, they germinate very fast actually. But the problem is I can't get them to grow super fast in my basement. Maybe with a hot grow tent I could try and set up to get it go quicker. But yeah, this just doesn't work. This one's pretty interesting. It's got two little new growths here. I don't know if you can really see them. One coming from the side here and the other just coming from the center. So this will be a little more bushy, which is neat. Um, I think this one can actually use a bigger pot. Lucky me, I got some pots sitting here. Could be probably a bigger one, but like I said earlier, I ordered 500 tiny pots. I don't know what I was thinking. I think I was thinking I was going to try and sell plants eventually. And I still can with all those pots, but... I like trading more than selling right now just because I don't even want to deal with the logistics of actually like running a website yet. And I can't keep plants in stock well enough to like really sell them, I think. I got some other stuff I want to try and like offer, which is like a lot of 3D printed stuff. And I got some other neat stuff I'm kind of working on, but um, that I've promised it a million times, but I never get to actually doing it. So I'm not going to even mention it. Well, I kind of already did, but there's there's some things in the pipeline, but there's just a, I'm just busy. Family stuff and life stuff, it just kind of makes everything go slow. But that's okay. All right, look at that. This one doesn't look that good, but if you can see, it's got some growth coming, so it'll be fine. I'm just like building up plants here. This isn't good. I got too many, too many. More dead ones. I'm actually excited to do this video because one, you guys like to listen to me just ramble on. And two, this is something I've needed to do forever, which uh, I wish I could show you my, new, my camera setup. It's actually pretty sweet. I don't use this camera very often, but I just finally got it set up to a way I want it where I can actually film these more like uh what do you call this i can't think in pot plants at the same time like just these like pot with me videos or whatever i can film them a lot easier so you might get more of them now which is kind of cool because i know a lot of people actually enjoy these and they're kind of fun i think rambling helps me also um consolidate my thoughts on things if that makes any sense it's almost like when you teach someone something you learn it better as you teach it so kind of like that. This one looks like it's toast. Might be. We'll give it a shot. We don't need to throw him out just yet. Ay, ay, ay. This is a bigger one that kind of sucks to see not make it. Oopsie. Oof. Do you see that? Actually, I don't even know what you can see. Oh, you can see that. So this one actually has some like green growth here. But oh, yeah, yeah. Is it pretty bad? I don't know whether to give up on this one or not. I'll set this one to the side. We can reuse his pot. You can kind of see, maybe you can't. These are getting a little bigger. Wow, this one's got a heck of a lot of roots. And like I was saying earlier, the ones in the back are just bigger. I think the humidity is better back there, even though it's only 30 inches. It seems to be a lot for humidity's sake. Yeah, a lot of these could use some fertilizer too. Um, I honestly don't even remember what I was talking about just five minutes ago. Oh yeah, the the camera. Let me see if I can use my phone to like create a mirror so you can see this. I can use like the selfie cam or something. Because it's neat. I don't know if you can... I've got a cool little screen and I got, I got it in the cage and everything. And You know, I've had all that stuff, but um, now it's kind of set up in a good way where I can quickly like to film a video like this which is awesome because in the past I didn't want to film these kind of videos because it just made the chores take longer which honestly it already is because I'm rambling but whatever I have to keep producing tons of content because if I, as soon as I stop YouTube will like immediately take all the like impressions away it's crazy like they tell you that it doesn't well I shouldn't say it I mean, I don't think it happens to everybody, and maybe my videos just aren't that, like, catchy or whatever, but if I stop producing content, it's like I immediately get punished by YouTube. It's crazy. I know other YouTube 
content creators, like the really big guys, they can like go two months and then produce another banger and get a few million views. But I guess they're, I think they're just on a different level. It's, and their videos are usually pretty awesome, so they can do that. I don't quite have that skill to make like those really amazing videos yet. But eventually I will, as time I get time and stuff. But yeah, if I don't keep producing, YouTube will just like destroy the channel with no remorse. Uh, this one needs a new pot. And I don't know if I have any. I don't think this is much difference. Well, some of these roots are actually pretty bad, so I think we just rip them off. We can pot it up in the same pot better. There we go. Look at that. Some of the roots are pretty, like, brown and, like, a little bit rotted. Not doing so good. Ooh. So we just kind of called it, and now it'll fit in here a lot better. Beautiful. Just beautiful. And then we can pot it up. A week from now, these are all going to be dead or something. Like, rip out with me, guys. Check out my sweet uh, suggestions. Now, this should be all right. I got to water them real good tonight, too. It, the last three nights, I was like, oh, I got to water my plants. But it was 2 in the morning. and Well, it's already 2 in the morning now. But what can you do, right? All right, that one's good. I don't know what to do with these. They're just piling up. All right, how is this one doing? Pretty good, actually. Eh. I don't know if this one actually needs to be repotted. I'm feeling a little lazy, and like I said, it's 2 in the morning. This one actually is buried quite well. Here. See? That one looks good, so we'll leave that one. This one looks pretty good, too. So we can leave this one. And these are all bad. Look at this. Oh, no, I just knocked them over. Another thing I don't like about these really little pots is they're so narrow, they fall so easily. It drives me absolutely bonkers. Like, there's just dirt everywhere in this room because I constantly knock these little things over. All right. Feels good to cleanse some of these uh, more dirty. Uh, not looking so hot, but I actually think it's potted up nicely. Hold on. Let me grab some more of these empty pots. This is great. The overall like footprint of these anthuriums has like shrinked tremendously because there's so many empty pots that I just haven't dealt with. Here's one of those. Uh, um, this one is an anthurium atropurpureum. It's actually I really like this one. It gets these really nice like textured leaves. It'll get big too. Like it can be like a floor plant, like probably this high off the ground. A good like what is that four feet or something. This one looks pretty good. Um, I'll just rough up the soil a little bit. I'm going to dump some of the top stuff off and maybe add some new stuff on there, which is not new. It's just recycled, but it's not as packed in there, if that makes any sense. That soil was starting from age and just, like, being watered on constantly. It was, like, starting to pack a little bit, so I didn't want that. Um, but, yeah, this one's growing pretty good. I think a lot of my bird nest ones are starting to flower as well, so that's cool. Um, what else we got here? Empty. Uh, I probably could center this one. Uh, I'm going to fix this one. I don't know. Oh, wow. Pathetic. I thought this would have more roots, but it really doesn't. So we'll get it nice and centered. Pot it up nice. It's still healthy, though. Not many roots, but there's, well, I guess healthy is pretty subjective. It's pretty healthy for my setup. Oh, uh, another topic we can sort of talk about is... I'm not going to dig it out right now, which kind of makes this whole segment pretty lame, but one of my silver swords actually flowered, which is really crazy because I've never had a philodendron flower. But the issue I have is I really don't know, like, how to deal with... Oh, there's a spider on here. That's pretty cool. Um, I don't know how to deal with those flowers. They're a lot harder than anthurium because they open and close, and there's, like, two... There's obviously two stages as well, but... Um, the opening and closing thing, I think it's like in the middle of the night or something weird or early in the morning. And um, I know I'm not going to be up for that. So I don't know. I'm excited for the whole philodendron thing because I think 2024, you know, my big guess with 2023 was it's the year of the anthurium seedlings. Wow, look at that. 
And I think 2024, people are going to kind of get a, a, an idea on how to really hybridize philodendrons. So we're seeing a massive influx of um, anthurium seedlings. Like everyone and their mom is literally selling them on, online, which I've sort of complained about it in the past because people will sell you like, they'll sell you like not even this. They're smaller than this. And they'll, it'll, they'll just give you some, some cross, some parent names and just... You don't even know how good the cross is because a lot of times there's no real guarantee that they actually cross it. It could just have self-pollinated. Lord knows like how it got pollinated. So it's always funny that people are like scooping up these, like I would almost call them like a pipe dream. People pay pretty good money for these, some of these like mystery anthuriums when they have like no idea how they're really going to turn out. And they probably most likely ooh, will just end up looking like another... Uh, Magnificum, honestly, some of this stuff. I don't know what to put this one in. But yeah, so this year 2023, end of 2022, that was year of the Anthurium because everyone's breeding Anthuriums right now. So, well, not everyone, but a, a significant portion of people, this fits in here pretty good, are breeding Anthuriums. But I think people are going to start to figure out um, Philodendron, and so we're going to start to see some sweet hybrids. I like that everyone is breeding it. So I, I'm not knocking the people selling the seedlings because it's cool that they're at least breeding stuff. But like I said, it's like, get your seedlings a little bigger, a little healthier. They'll be like these little scrawny, like, <laughs> let me see, I, I probably have something that looks bad, bad enough. They'll just like list some parents and be like, here, get this sweet seedling, 60 bucks. And you're like, you're just gambling at that point. It's like buying loot boxes in video games or something. You don't know what you're going to get but you're paying a pretty penny for it. But like I said, it is awesome because we're getting a lot of cool anthuriums and it's just pushes the variety that we have. I think, I mean, I'm sure there always have been a lot of breeders in the past before this whole plant populate, like popularity took off. But um, I think there's going to be a lot of hobbyists pushing some pretty cool hybrids in the future, which is awesome because they're going to really see a big expansion in like plants that you can collect and admire and enjoy. So I'm excited. I don't know if you can see on here, but there is a flower forming right here. So that's pretty exciting. I can't believe this one's flowering already. It's pretty young still, but cool. I mean, like I said, the more flowering I have, the more pollen I have, the more chances I have for hybridization. So that really excites me. I wonder if this one is also producing a flower. Um, not quite. Even though this one's bigger, interestingly enough, yeah, it's a lot bigger, actually, significantly bigger. It's just now starting to push out its first flower right here. You can't see it. Um, I don't know how much you guys know about Anthurium, but usually once they're mature, every new leaf is a new flower as well. So the flowers will come out of the base of the leaf. I'm pretty darn sure you can't see this, but there's a little flower tip coming out here, and the new growth is also coming out of right here. So the new leaf will be here, and the flower will be there, and there's also going to be a flower right here. Basically, every new leaf will put out a new flower. So that's why everyone is pollinating now because in the last few years, people collected a lot of anthurium and everyone's are starting to get mature. And so now every new leaf is an opportunity to try and hybridize or just create seedlings, even if you self-pollinate. So it's cool. You know, it's very cool. But that's why it's so popular right now is because everyone finally is getting mature anthuriums, you know, because a lot of people started with these smaller ones. And so that's why you're seeing so much of it online, which is exciting. Because like I said, there's some really cool hybrids that people are creating that are just wonderful. And people target some some of the more... This like doesn't even make a difference. Ay, ay, ay. Um, like there's two interesting aspects of, of Anthurium uh, hybrid, hybridization in my opinion. One, you have like your foliage. So you have like the actual leaves and like what the leaves will look like. But another one that I think is really interesting and I want to pursue is the flowers. So certain, the, the problem is not, many of these flowers are not exciting. They're kind of just boring, but there are some pretty exciting flowers. And one of my favorite is, uh, there's an anthurium called anthurium, like chainsaw, I think. Uh, none of these are fitting. And they, I can't pronounce the two, but they're both like pigtail form like the flower spadix forms like almost like a pigtail and this needs a much bigger pot this is just not going to do and the pigtail is like this bright red pigtail and it's it's fantastic it's so pretty 
I, like I said, I really love the idea that you can either choose foliage or flowers to try and breed for. Dang it, this is bad. I guess we just got to go for like a really big pot here. I don't like using too big of a pot because it consumes a lot, a lot of soil. And I mean, it's not like it's expensive. Actually, you know, my potting medium is like probably the cheapest you can make because peat moss is dirt cheap and so is perlite. So that's why I started using this mix is because I don't like paying a fortune just for the soil. And maybe that hurts me in the long run. Maybe this mix is not that good and that's why my stuff is slow. I don't know, but I definitely do know that in any of these wild situations where these things grow, they don't have charcoal and giant perlite and some orchid bark and sphagnum moss. They don't have like all that stuff. They usually have more of like a peat. I guess it's not peat, but it's like a really broken down like substance from the all the leaves and everything else breaking down. So yeah, I don't know. All that, like the chart, that, what is it, ABG mix or whatever. I know it works pretty well, but darn, for the price, there's other options, I think. Look at that nicely potted up anthurium. How beautiful. All right. Hopefully that repotting doesn't jack up the flowers. You know what I mean? Like, I stunt it a little bit and it aborts the flowers. That would suck. It's just now getting its first flowers, but... What can you do, right? You gotta repot, you gotta repot. This one's doing pretty good. Got It's holding three leaves, which is impressive, and then it's got a new one coming in. Nothing's really yellowing yet, so this is a pretty healthy one. But again, like I said, from the back here, they just they seem to do so much better. I'm guessing it's the humidity. I really need some deeper pots. This is bad. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. I'm like just like kind of like throwing it in there because I'm trying to get it to like jiggle up into the roots. You know what I realized too is I shook a lot of the weeds off over this, so I'm sure there's like clover seeds in all of this, so I'll have to just pick it early. All right, this never ends. I'm going to try and organize some of this stuff. Eh, maybe I'm not. Let's just get this stuff potted up first. All right, we, well actually we don't have a problem. We just more survived than I had anticipated. I got to put all these somewhere. All right, I have only barely even touched half of this shelf and we have so much more to go. And it's probably 2.30 at this point. Well, let's just power through it. This one's pretty yellow. I'll just rip it off now. And I'm not even gonna repot this one. I think this one's actually buried enough. A dead one. Sorry about the squeaky chair. There's not much I can do about it at this point. Here's another one that's just, this is like, some of these ones in the back, started to decline and I think they actually got overwatered a little too much. Wow, look at that root structure, very long. I'm not 100% sure. Uh-oh, well, I broke it. That's not good. Okay, well, actually it could be interesting. You see this little thing here? That looks like a new growth to me. And it was quite deep, but it's very white because it hasn't got any light, so it couldn't photosynthesize and get its like green color. But that might actually turn into a plant. I'd be interested to see if it does. Yeah, this one is not doing so hot either. I'll just rip this off. It's a waste of time at this point. There's a little red guy here. So he's got some new growth. Problem is these roots are like really gangly. All right, hopefully after potting this one up nice. I actually reduced its pot size, interestingly enough. But hopefully this new, or this current leaf stays alive and the new one comes in well. And then I think it'll pull through just fine. I got a bunch more seeds. I got quite a few hybrids actually coming up that I haven't shown you guys yet, but I'll, I'll make a video about it. I'll make a video dedicated to actually raising these anthuriums from seed because I've been doing a lot. I've probably raised, or I've tried to raise at least probably 400 seeds now maybe, you know, and I think I've figured out really good like mediums for starting seedlings. All right, we should put this over here. And well, I'll just tell you now, if you're, if you're still watching, you get the sweet tips because you stuck around. But uh, look at this one. It's way off to the side like that. I don't like that. But um, yeah, so the, the potting medium that I use that seems to work the best for starting seeds is like perlite and vermiculite. I've done sphagnum moss. I've done just perlite. Um, I've done like aeroid mix. Uh, what else have I tried? 
I've tried a lot of different stuff. Maybe not a lot, pretty much what I just said, but what always like produces the best results is like a perlite and vermiculite mix. It is killer. And oh, the secret sauce to that, because what you'll find with that is also that uh, maybe these are just too root bound and that's why they can't support more leaves. Maybe that's the trick. Maybe I should really pot these up in bigger pots, which sucks. So they take up more space, but um, yeah, this one needs a bigger pot. What am I saying? What am I saying? Oh yeah. The secret sauce to the potting mix for starting these seedlings, ooh, I just broke into growth off, is uh, Osmocote. For whatever reason, it's not, well, not whatever reason, it's supposed to be pretty gentle. It gives them just what they need, and they love it. <sighs> All right, I think in order to save some space, I'm going to start potting up multiples. Because this is an awfully big pot, and... I just can't be having that many of them. So maybe we'll take this other big guy here who's doing... This one is doing all right. These dang weeds. It did lose a big leaf. A little bit of crispiness, but this newest one is doing pretty good. No spider mites. That's good. So I'll pot this one up in there as well. Because this one's got a healthy root base. Look at that. You can't really see it, but... A lot of roots on that one. A lot of roots in this one. It's a match made in heaven. We're going to pot them up together. I mean, they are siblings, so they can share a pot. They came from the same seed stock. Ooh, wait a second. I don't know what's going on here. We might get a flower on this one pretty soon, which would be really cool. Because I want to start getting, the, like, like I said, these are the hardy Magnificum that have survived like the worst conditions known to mankind and they're still alive so that's kind of what I want to foster that kind of um gosh I just think this is not a good idea uh are these gonna fit in here nicely yeah they might hopefully I don't kill these off I'm just like burying weeds in here everything there's old roots this will be their, I'll have to do like a, a follow up to this video. If any of you are watching, this is like a, uh, see these consume so much soil. I'm like running low now. The only thing I is I don't like that it's not buried that deep. It's hard to get it deeper. This left one is doing all right. And now I'm like running that risk where I told you guys where I don't like to overfill the pots because then the water runs out, but I'm already like committing that sin. And what can you do? I just hit the water gen like gingerly. I'm sure actually some of this will co like compact down. You know, if you can't see this, I'm sorry. I kind of, the camera angle's not that good. It's basically up against a wall. If you remember the tour, this is like the end of the road here, so. We'll try this big bad boy here. Look at that. Two big old Magnificum. Hopefully it seeds. Put that in the back corner because they like it back there. All right, we got some more here. Let's see how this guy's doing. Not bad, actually. Not good, not bad. What the heck? Got some growth. This is obviously a little crispy. I don't know what's on these things. Seeds, weed seeds, great. Yeah, they almost look like eggs or something, those seeds that fly off that I was telling you about earlier. This one's really compacted, which I think might be causing issues. So I'll kind of loosen it up by squishing it. I'm gonna dump some off and put some back in, which is basically the same stuff is coming back in, but. Wow, this, the root conditions are not great. There is some side growth coming in on this one. Yeah. All right. Yeah, this soil is actually kind of uh, not very, not a lot of perlite in this one. Pretty wet. So we'll add it to the main mix here and try and see what we can do. There we go. There's a secondary growth starting to form, though, so this one's bushing out. Again, like I said, they are my plants are kind of stressed in this environment, but that stress brings out those secondary growths, so you get bushier plants. Which is not something to be proud of because obviously I'm stressing them out, but 
Like, look at these weeds. I don't see any aphids on here, though. They didn't spread to this one yet. But regardless, you don't want weeds in your garden. I'm actually not going to repot this one. This one feels pretty good. Uh, there's a lot of per I can see the perlite in here. So that's fine. Oh, wow, this one is really cool. So this one I stressed to the max. And you will see in a second here. I don't know what to do, though, with this one. Um, I really don't want to repot this. You're not going to be able to see it, but there's like four different growths on this one. If this one survives, it will be really bushy. This is going to be like a super bush, basically. So that's pretty cool. These ones are a little on the dry side. Somehow they're still putting out new growth. That's good. Um, we'll just repot it. We'll probably use it. Not a, not a lot of roots. Pretty healthy, though. They're not breaking. Let's check this one out. This one's really dry. Oh, wow. I should be ashamed. This one is like... Can you see how dry that is? The poor guy. He's trying to put out a new leaf, and I dried him up like that. Despicable. Yeah, this one's actually really dry. The roots are really dry. They're okay, though. Look at all these weed roots. I wonder if my channel is going to get flagged because I've said weed too many times. I should say clover or whatever the other. There's two. I got two different weed species in here. and I don't know how I'm going to repot this one because this is like a huge clump. But this one is the non-clover one. All right, buddy. Let's get you in here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. This one might be sticking out a little bit too much. I know I told you I want to bury him deeper, but his roots are a little less pliable. I mean, when, when their roots are really dry, they can, like, snap a little easier, it seems. Or maybe vice versa. I don't know. I don't want to mess with it too much. That one's potted. Good enough. This one just put out a new... Oh, I just snapped something off. Big old root. That's all right. We're going to bury it nice and deep. It'll get new roots. This leaf is still actually hardening off, and you can see it has that, like, and it's ripping itself apart thing there. What can you do, right? Pot it up. Oh, ripped another root. This one's not doing so good. I don't know how this one will pull through. I just destroyed its, like, root structure. But it's worth a shot. I mean, you guys can see clearly there must be, what, 15, 20 Magnificum at this point? So even if I only get, like, five good hardy ones that really can thrive in here, that's a good amount to breed, start breeding with. So that would be awesome. All right, I think that does it for the Magnificum. Now I just have to finish up all these uh, bird nest ones. And I think we're all set. Oh, a spider. I got a lot of resident spiders in here. It's kind of cool. I hope they, like kill mealybugs or something, but I doubt it. Okay, so I don't know what species this is, but I'm pretty sure this and this are exactly the same, actually, even though one is much more narrow and one is much more wider. And that's the cool thing about having seeds, is you sometimes get some cool varieties, so it's just neat. I don't think I'm going to mess with this one too much. It seems to be doing fine. I'm just going to pull the weeds out of here. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the tour I did of Bill Rodolante's uh, nursery and whatnot in, down in Miami. But he talked about how these things are all pretty much indestructible. And I would agree with him that these um, bird nest anthurium just go through. They can go through hell and back and be just fine. They, they've gone through massive droughts, really wet soil. It doesn't really bother them. And... I don't think I've fertilized these, and they've still produced such, like, a hardy leaf. I mean, it just looks fantastic. Like, look at that thing. So I'm not going to repot this one yet. Even, oops. You know, maybe I should. Honestly, I, I think I need to get some proper pots before I do it. So I'll just get the weeds out for now, and maybe... Yeah, that one's dry. See, this clover stuff is everywhere. This is going to be a pretty long... Uh, repot with me. 
I don't know how many of you are actually going to watch this because like it's, I've been rambling on for probably an hour now, maybe. Probably close to 3 a.m. I do not know how I'm going to get up for work tomorrow, but we're just going to have to. All right. I'm going to actually repot this one because I'm bothered by all the weeds. There's probably a lot of weed roots in here. And I want to get rid of them. Yep, I can see them already. There's actually a perfect pot for this one. So I see it. Pretty good uh, root structure on this guy, though. I'm trying to see if this one's going to flower. I don't think so. we still got a little, little bit of time. I would say maybe two more leaves might start flowering because I can see the flower. You can kind of see them form or earlier on the early leaves, but they just don't actually turn into flowers. It's like they're like premature or something. But I think pretty soon we'll get some flowers on these bird nests. I don't know what kind of hybridization you can do with them as far as like with Magnificum or something because that'd be kind of cool. But we can try. This one has, since it has so many roots, I'm really trying to shake it in there, but this is another one I want to bury a lot deeper because there's a lot of roots it's trying to push out, but I can't get it to do so because my humidity is too poor, but I think this will be good now. I got some clovers in there. Ugh. I keep throwing the weeds back in the bin and then I dump them back in the, each new pot. Like a, Some of the things I do are very questionable. There, now it's out. All right, how's this one looking? Looks like it's just got some weeds. This is actually a double seedling. You might not be able to tell, but two of them grew up right next to each other. Or it put it out an outcropping, I'm not sure. But this one's also very similar to the other narrow-leafed one. Well, I think it's, it's the exact same species. Same lot of seeds. It's just, like I said, one of them is really wide and the rest are pretty narrow. I'm going to leave, eh, I'm not going to leave, I'll just repot them all. Here's some more little ones. I don't know why these stayed little and the other ones got so much bigger. Maybe it's like a genetic thing or just happened to, the other ones happened to get more water or less, who knows. But again, it could be a seed grown thing or like because it's seed grown, it just has different genetics, you know. Some are fast, some are slow. Um, I'll... I'll probably do it like a repot with me with my other anthuriums because I got to get them out of the prop bin, and I'll kind of show you how that what that looks like. But one setup grew so much faster, and it came from a really mature magnificum, the seeds that I planted. So I'm excited about that one though because for whatever reason they're super hardy, the plants, and they grew really fast and really strong compared to the other ones. So it's like another one of those like. You want to breed for that, like, hardiness. At least that's what I'm trying to do. I think this one's actually deep enough. That one's deep enough. This one could be repotted. Take the old leaves off. I don't know. I just want hardy. I want plants I can put up in my house that are awesome. Some sweet anthuriums. Yeah, I mean, I, I gave you guys, like, the whole plant room tour. I have like five plants upstairs, not even. I, I really don't have many upstairs, so that's why I didn't show any of them. Because it's like two orchids without, they're not in bloom. Um, I have like a little cactus, and that's about it. Mostly because I got a baby in the house, and he'll, he'll pull it to the floor. So that's why we don't have plants upstairs. I mean, I, he's not like malicious, but he just reaches and whatever he can grab is what he grabs so no plants that can get close to the edge I mean all these anthurium actually would be pretty good because they're pretty upright so it probably wouldn't be a problem but I don't want him to like eat one of these or something and be like responsible for my son getting sick that would not be good once he's a little older though I'm going to fill my house full of plants I got some southern facing windows and well, my house is kind of situated awkwardly, I think, for plants, but I could get it figured out. I think that's it for these bird nests. You know, I'm really curious. I'm going to be doing a video pretty shortly about just trying to grow plants in water. I know other people have done it, so I'm curious about how well it works. Um, one of my big, like, 
one of the big te tech plant rules, in my opinion, and I hope that you've got kind of gotten this vibe from me is, you know, even though I do these experiment videos and I show you the results, I still think you should try it too. Um, a lot, ooh, look at these roots. These look horrible. It's just rotted. Look at that. Interesting. I mean, I think it's going to be fine because it's bird nest, but that's why these are so behind. The roots really got a little too gross. So all I'm doing is ripping off the dead stuff. Pull, pull, pull. Whatever comes off, comes off. I'm going to bury them a little deeper and they should be fine. But anyways, even if I show you a cool experiment and I show you the updates every month, you know, every two weeks, and you can see that it works, I still think you should try the same experiment in your setup. Because I have a feeling there's a lot of like hidden variables that are hard to really pin down. And you need to find out what works best in your environment, in your house, in your setup with your water, your exact mediums, you know, your light, like all that stuff really matters. So I think if you see experiments that I do, you should repeat them just for fun. And I think you could learn a lot because you might have different results. I know a lot of people complain about water propagating and how their stuff rots. Some people even have rotting problems with sphagnum moss, you know. And it sucks because I try and recommend them like what to do or like how to save stuff. And it doesn't make a difference because it just isn't going to work for them. So that's why if there's one takeaway from this channel that you guys should have, it's not so much what I'm doing. It's like the experimentation. That is like the important part in my opinion. Because that is how you'll learn like what works best for you. Because everyone's water is different acidity levels different or like ph level, levels basically everyone's water is different like you can have well water you can have um like soft water hard water city water with like chlorine in it there's a million different like variables with that and that can affect a lot of things and how warm your house is how cold your house is so many factors that i can't even think of that can cause problems so that's why if like i said if you're gonna have a big takeaway from tech plant i mean you can try and use what i do as a guideline because i obviously i'm showing you results usually i'm not just like saying do this and then not showing you anything so you can at least see that there's like it actually worked for me at least but you should make sure it works for you too so you should definitely try and re repeat some of these experiments um i think that's pretty much it for these anthuriums here i don't i don't think this is going to be tackled in this video this is like another hour easily But, yeah, I don't know. I hope you guys like this whole Anthurium repotting with me, I guess you could call it that. It was fun. I'm going to try and do more of these with you guys because I know some people actually like them. So let's repot this one before we go. But, yeah, I kind of ramble a lot. I don't really know what to talk about. So maybe, actually, I wish I said this in the beginning. Um, wow, these roots are horrible. Look at this. This is really surprising. See, there's a lot of sphagnum moss wadded up in here. And people in some of my other videos, I guess this video's not ending anytime soon because this is a new topic. You know, a lot of my propagation videos, I peel all the sphagnum moss off the roots. And a lot of people say you can just plant it up. But it really depends on what kind of medium you're going to plant it in because a lot of times the sphagnum moss holds so much water, it can create like an anaerobic situation inside the soil. If you use a really airy aeroid mix, you probably won't have any issues with it because there's a lot of sphagnum moss in that. But not everyone has like that ABG mix or that more expensive stuff. So that's why I try and take the sphagnum moss off because it can create such like wet conditions if it's buried under dirt, you know. So, yeah, surprisingly for how healthy this plant looks, the roots are not that great. Um, But yeah, what I was going to say before I discovered these bad roots was... Um, let me know in the comments kind of maybe some topics you want me to talk about, ramble on, give my opinion on, or at least my experience on like maybe whatever, you know, growing Monstera, doing this, growing that. I can at least give you what's worked for me, talk about that, because I honestly don't know what to talk about in these sort of videos. It's more like I have to get some chores done, and I'm sure I can show you some interesting things, you know, and maybe we come upon something to learn from like we kind of learned in this video 
back by the wall, the humidity seems to be a little higher, I think, which is why I have higher success with those plants. I don't know for sure, but that's my guess. But um, yeah, in the comment section, definitely tell me what you would want me to talk about. I think this needs to be repotted into something too. This is a Bill Rodolante anthurium. This is a, quite a different kind too. It's more of a vining anthurium. It gets very tall, it's more elongated. A lot of these other ones are more rosette style. They kind of more bushy, but I think this one really does grow upwards because the internodal length is huge on this one and just the style is very different from what I've seen. And we're not gonna pot this one up. I'm gonna wait. But yeah, uh, I, I guess I hope you guys enjoyed this repot and ramble, I guess is what I should really call it because that's what I what I did. But yeah, I'm gonna clean all this up and I'll, I'll maybe put some little B-roll footage at the end showing you kind of what it looks like. You only kind of saw a preview, but um, there's a lot more space now. Maybe not a lot because there's a lot of plants on the floor I gotta put back up here. But yeah, it was fun. I got some stuff done. Maybe I produce something you guys will enjoy and yeah. As always, guys, may your plants go strong and healthy. See you next time.